Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Yam Bar Podcast. This is Brian Barcelo, host of this episode. Today, we're joined by Glenda, co-owner of American Ingenuity Geodesic Dome Home Kits. Hi, Glenda. Thank you for joining us. Hello there, Brian. Thanks for calling. Hi, hey, Glenda. Will you tell us um, a little bit more about who you are and what you guys do? I'm one of the co-owners of American Ingenuity, and our website's AIDomes.com. And for over 40 years, our company's manufactured prefab building panels that have a concrete exterior. And when they're assembled, they make this very strong, very super energy efficient um, home that has no roof to burn or no shingles to replace. That's excellent. In light of what's been going on, people have been seeing on the news and stuff, how do you think your homes would fare compared to the conventional homes? Um, the only thing I can comment on is that we've had two customers out of California buy our building kit because their wood houses burned down mm -hmm. in the fires out there in California. Because mm -hmm. the exterior is all steel reinforced concrete. There's no wood to interrupt the insulation. There's no wood exposed to burn, to rot, or for termites to eat, and no shingles on it to burn. So it would do great. Following nature's own blueprint, domes can shelter enormous spaces using minimal materials. Although this giant dome over New York City was never built, today our landscape is dotted with about 300,000 more modest versions. Housing everything from botanical gardens to revolving restaurants, even Arctic shelters for military radar. But most of all, Bucky wanted his domes to house us. He never strayed far from the problem of low-cost housing. The thinking of the total world, thinking of the world as an integrated system, thinking about our interconnection, thinking about shelter, not a local problem, but how do we house a billion and a half people that don't have proper shelter. From his eco-friendly houses to his fuel-efficient cars, it seems as if Bucky's 20th century proposals and our 21st century problems may have finally achieved a kind of synergy, something he'd like since he invented the word synergy too. And while the bubble may have burst for some of Fuller's ideas, back in Pleasantville, New York... Do you think this is the future or the past? I think it's the past that was forgotten that needs to be the future in order to have a sustainable future for them. Bucky loved to point to the image of the Earth as seen from space. To him, it was a reminder that here, under the great big dome of the sky, we are all in this together. People say to me, I wonder what it would be like to be on a spaceship. And I say to you, you don't really realize what you're doing. <laughs> because everybody is an astronaut. You all live aboard a beautiful little spaceship called Earth. Now, uh, as far as um, cost, is it comparable to a conventional home? A custom house, but not a houses built in a subdivision where they build 5, 10, 20, 50 of them at one time because then they have reduced material costs, reduced labor costs. This is about the same price per square foot as a custom home. And they get more. A custom house rarely has insulation that's worth 10 inches of fiberglass batting. That'd be a, like a 2 by 10 wall because that's what our insulation is comparable to. Uh, it's R28 and it's comparable to 10 inches of fiberglass batting, but there's no wood to interrupt our insulation. So for about the same price per square foot on a custom box-shaped house, they get a, a more energy efficient, super strong building. We The exterior panels, not doors and windows, not framed walls out there where doors and windows are installed, have a 225 mile an hour wind F4 tornado warranty. Wow. So how about energy savings? We have uh, on our website actual energy bills for maybe five years or more of our office, 
3,700 square foot buildings where we can cool them for less than $85 a month in the hot Florida summer months to 74 degrees during the day when we're here, Monday through Saturday, but uh, 77 degrees at night and on Sunday. And then on our website, we also have bills for a 40-foot dome home, 34 dome home, and various other information. The bottom line, our domes can be cool for at least 50 to 60% less than a box-shaped house. And the main reason is that super thick insulation is not interrupted by wood, and the exterior surface area of the dome is 30% less surface area than a box-shaped house. So that's... That's why it's so efficient. Incredible. Now, how about financing? That's the single biggest hurdle to building a dome because these we've sold over 800 kits in 47 states and 15 foreign areas as far as Australia, and these become permanent homes. Rarely do people need to move to sell them, so as a result, there's no resale value or comps, it's called, on the dome. Therefore, lenders are conservative and want a big 25 to 35% cash down payment based on the finished price of a house. So a simple little $100,000 house, they want 25000 or 35000 cash down payment. And most people don't have that kind of money. So that's mm-hmm. why you don't see, you know, thousands of these built in every area that needs them, like in California, out west where all the fires are, or in the hurricane-prone coastal areas, or in the tornado belt in the mid-United States. Wow, that almost seems insane. It seems like those type of houses would be mandatory, you know, because they can withstand. Uh, Tell me something about zoning. Are there any problems about putting up a dome structure in certain areas? Oh, sure. Zoning even relates to even box-shaped houses. Zoning definitely sometimes wants specific type roofs, shingled versus tile versus whatever for certain pitch for that box-shaped house, certain square footage. So, yeah, zoning has to be checked um, before a person buys land to make sure that the, it will accept a round concrete dome on the property. One of the features I love about the house on um, the dome structures is that, if I'm not mistaken, there's uh, no gap in between the walls, so you don't have any pests or, or rodents or anything living in there. Is that true? Well, you mean on the outside shell, the wall that we have is mm-hmm. continuous. That's right. There, it's seven inches of white, rigid, expanded polystyrene insulation, mm-hmm. not urethane foam, mm-hmm. uh, not uh, styrofoam, um, and then on the inside, it's half-inch Dins Armor, special Dins Armor drywall that's moisture-resistant, mold-resistant. And on the outside, is three-quarter-inch concrete reinforced with galvanized steel mesh and fiber, so it's continuous. There is no cavity there. I, if you're talking about inside the building where the kitchens and bathrooms and bedrooms are, mm-hmm. those interior walls are regular framed walls, regular two-by-four framed walls with a regular drywall on them. It's built on site per the layout that each person chooses i see what you're saying yes so um the outside is well somewhat impervious so you shouldn't be having any intrusion from the outside as far as rodents or insects or anything like that oh good point right it's continuous it's solid right Uh, and the footers there now where there's basements or frost lines there's a uh, a stem wall has to be built to get the footer below the frost line, just like a box-shaped house, because if the footer's not below the frost line, then the footer and the slab will move up and down based on freezing and thawing of the soil. Then you can have openings in the footer and the slab where uh, stuff could come in the building, I guess. But nope, I've never heard of, there's no cavities, right. Oh, uh, that's great. Um, once again, thank you for um, doing this podcast. Will you tell us once again where uh, people can get in contact you to talk to you about purchasing one of the kits? Yeah, our website is aidomes.com, and on there there's a button to click on for contact us that has the phone number and our email address. And uh, we're uh, office, if, uh, oh, if they get our answer machine, that just means we're on the phone with another customer or it's after business hours and they just leave a message and we'll call them back because we have a lot of people out west and we're three hours, we're in eastern time zone in Florida. So they can call us and email us to get information. Well, on our website, we have uh, regular prices and a, and a 10% discount, Ooh. a discount on the plans and mm-hmm. so, but the, um, 
the kits, like a 36-foot in diameter dome, can either be a, when it's finished with local materials, either be two bedrooms, three baths with two, two or three bedrooms with two baths, and that kit, without shipping costs, would probably be, with building plans, probably about $42,000. Now, if they need an engineer seal on the plans, that's a separate um, no, wait, no, wait, Brian, that's just the exterior shell, because then the, on site, they've got to buy the land, they got to do site preparation, put a driveway in, and then put a foundation, our standard foundation's a slab, uh, and then the dome, these exterior walls and roof, roof panels are installed, then the subcontractors come in and do the plumbing, the framing, the electrical, install the interior walls, bathroom fixtures, kitchen cabinets, and finish the inside of the house just like a regular house. So the price I gave you is just for the kit, the building kit that includes all the prefab panels for the exterior walls and roof, does not include any doors and windows or any interior items because we figure people should not pay shipping costs on things they can buy locally at Lowe's, Home ah. Depot, or eBay, or Craigslist, etc. Good thinking, and thank you for that clarification. Mm -hmm. You bet. It's our pleasure. And we have an introductory email that we send out that has important links and information from our website because our website's extensive. AIDomes.com has about 150 pages of information, has over 120 stock floor plan layouts for the 10 size dome kits we manufacture. Once that kit's assembled and finished with local materials, we have tiny domes from 172 square feet up to over 2,900 square feet in one dome mm -hmm. oh and i almost um forgot to mention the warranty if i'm not mistaken it's something about 225 miles per hour and i believe it was f4 category winds is that correct or tornado that's Tor right on the exterior prefab panels not doors and windows or frame walls around doors and windows we had two domes uh, that were built in the U.S. Virgin Islands and British Virgin Islands that went through two Category 5 hurricanes in a 12-day period with no damage when the areas were destroyed. That was Irma and Marie last hurricane season. And then uh, Irma came up through South Florida, and one of our domes was in the Florida Keys, and about 25% or so of the Keys was destroyed, but no damage to the dome. So these are just hypothetical numbers here we have actual on our website actual pictures of these domes that have gone through these hurricanes um with no damage wow tried and true yep excellent glenda thank you so much my pleasure we appreciate you coming to the ambar podcast thank you so much glenda thank you brian have a great day you too bye bye Hey everybody, that's it for this episode of the Yam Bar Podcast. Be sure to tune in next time and also be sure to tune in to our previous podcast. Once again, my name is Brian Barcelo and reminding you guys, the Yam Bar Podcast is the place where you make it happen. Peace.